back. My name is Pastor Justin Morris with the Pentecostal Evangelical Church. And if this is the first time you're tuning in, welcome. Um, the music that you heard in the beginning was called uh, That's What I Call Faith by Linda Lanier. She, this is off of her uh, Never Walk Alone CD. And she's been ministering for uh, probably co close to 30 years now. And uh, just an amazing minister of God. Her and her husband really uh really do a great job and i i love to feature her music on the front of my videos and so hey um before we get into uh the book of jeremiah because um or the study of jeremiah i just wanted to say i use that song because of the fact that jeremiah had to really walk in faith to do what he had to do and so but before we go into that we're going to go into our prayer request and so if you got your sheet, pull it out um, and write down. Uh, these are three prayers that I had. And uh, we always talk about the coronavirus at every video because I really want to continue to pray for the slow of this thing and that people get what God's trying to tell us and actually trying to tell the entire world. But these are the numbers for the, uh, the U.S. alone. Yesterday we had... <coughs> 11,008 deaths up to yesterday and today we're at 12,911 that was reported and so there's they are stating though uh the cases are dropping dramatically so hopefully this is going to be uh this is going to subside real quickly um today i applied for my va disability and uh i if you don't know i'd served uh over 20 years in the military, and uh, I have a lot of service-connected injuries, and so um, let's just, I'm just praying that the Lord will be kind there, and that he will uh, give me my just due, I'm hoping. And so we're also praying, continue to pray for our president and his team to uh, combat this as quick as possible and do everything that is in the right of the sight of the Lord, and uh, he's doing a great job as far as I'm concerned, and so let's just keep praying for him, okay? and his team as well. Um, okay, so if this is the first time you're tuning in or you, you just subscribed to our channel, which we've had um, probably about 30 new subscribers in the last couple of weeks, which I praise God for that, um, you may not have are real familiar with what our church does. And so we actually license and ordain people to start their own churches and their own ministries. And what we do is we provide a covering for them. And so um, the two people that are featured here, this is uh, David and Anna Belcher. They are actually the pastors of Christ Center Church in, in Chelan, Washington. And her sister and husband are also ordained ministers through our organization in the same church. And um, they, uh, they came to us about two years ago looking for a covering, and we provided that. And <clears throat> we started out, them out as licensed ministers, and then... Uh, they've done kept up with us so well that we, we saw the need for them to be ordained and, and the Lord ordained them through our organization. So um, amazing, amazing uh, couple and amazing church. We've been there, love their worship team. And so uh, we also license lay ministers to be able to go into nursing homes, jails, uh, uh, hospitals, uh, street ministry. Uh, we have another uh, YouTube friend that is a minister through our organization by the name of James, uh, Pastor James K. And uh, all things per prophetic is his YouTube channel. You might want to check, definitely want to check it out. And um, so <clears throat> you don't just have to be a pastor of a church. Most people that are in our organization are not pastors of a church, but a lot are. So uh, if you're ever interested in becoming license through an organization that will cover you and, and uh, support you. Just uh, just give us a call. Go, go on our website at www.pec.today. That's it. There's no .com or .org. And um, watch the videos there. See where we came from. We're almost 100 years old. And um, we've uh, licensed and ordained thousands of people 
to do true ministry in God's work. So, okay, without further ado, and a little advertisement there, we're going to jump right into Jeremiah. Um, I love the book of Jeremiah. It's packed full of 52 chapters of amazing information and amazing story here. And uh, you're really going to want to check out the full book. But <clears throat> maybe after I'm done with the uh, with going through the book of the 100, which is a book I wrote, uh, maybe we'll we'll do a, a whole 52 videos on Jeremiah. I don't know what the Lord will have me to do. But if you've got your book, open up to Jeremiah. If you don't, uh, you can get it on Amazon for $13.99. I'm all out. I, uh, I had 21 of them and they're all gone. So uh, get yours today and then uh, start with uh, Aaron and then you can catch up with us. But uh, anyways, uh, let's jump into Jeremiah. Jeremiah comes, the name Jeremiah comes from the Hebrew name right here. And I, I can't even, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that one, okay? Um, but it means Yahweh will exalt. Pretty amazing. Now, this comes from the root word of rum, meaning to exalt, and Yah referring to the Hebrew God. Uh, he is the writer of the book of Jeremiah, and uh, he is considered one of the major prophets, not because his message was more important than the minor prophets, it's just because it was so big, it was 52 chapters, okay? And so uh, uh, he was born to the priest Hilkai in a, in a small village called Anathroth, okay? And uh, now you can find that out in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. And this happened around 643 BC. Now, here's a map of the area where he was born at. And you can see it's only about three miles from Jerusalem. Wasn't very far away. Here's also a picture of the terrain and uh, some ruins of there, which I would love to walk through. I love history with a passion. So a lot of my videos you're going to see <clears throat> is... Uh, um, you're going to see a lot of maps and you're going to see some trains. Some you may never, okay? But uh, I like to put up kind of um, areas of where people were at and where they lived. It really gives us a perspective of how their culture were, was back in that time, okay? And um, to also kind of give you an idea, uh, Jeremiah died in, uh, in Egypt in, in and around 570 BC. So that gives you some kind of a, a reference there. Um, his family was known as a priestly family, so it kind of makes sense that he was called to be a prophet. I think it was kind of something that was uh, sure to come, okay? Um, but I don't think he figured he was going to be called around in his teenage years, between 13 to 16 years old. Um, but Nevertheless, his ministry lasted for over 40 years, so we know this was a God thing. Um, the reason why I believe it was he was a teenager is uh, Josiah started his reign in the same year Jeremiah was born. And, uh, the, and so the 13th year of jo Josiah's reign was 627 B.C. According to Jeremiah 1-2, this is when the word of the Lord had came to Jeremiah, thus being a teenager. So let's read the, let's read a chapter, chapter one, verses one and two. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkai, of the priests who were in Anathroth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Am, Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. So he also tells the Lord he's too young, okay, in chapters one, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. So uh, let's read that. This, this is interesting. Um, then I said, which is Jeremiah, Ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I'm a youth. Then the Lord goes on to scold Jeremiah a little bit about that. He, uh, he tells him, don't tell me you're, you're just a youth. In fact, you're going to do what I ask you to do. Okay, so let's read that, uh, 7 through 9. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Verse 8, do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and 
and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Okay, let's break this down for a second. In verse 8, he says, do not be afraid of their faces. Okay, so basically what he's saying is they're going to be looking at you like you're an idiot, like, uh, like you're beneath them. Do not be afraid of this. Just tell them what I'm, the words I'm putting in your mouth, and you'll be obeying me, okay? So he was a prophet that God sent to Judah in their last days before God had cast them out of the land like he had uh, did with the other 10 northern tribes that had ignored his warnings, okay? They ignored Jeremiah's warnings also in chapter 44, verse 16, um, and uh, they told him they were going to continue to worship their false gods. <clears throat> um, this didn't work out so well for him, all right? <laughs> but um, before we read verse 16, let's go to chapter 44, uh, verses 4 through 6. So we're kind of jumping way ahead here because um, I don't want to really preach the whole book, okay? Uh, so let's, let's go to chapter 44, verses 4 through 6. However... I have sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not do this abominable thing that I hate. This is the Lord speaking. <clears throat> but they did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense to other gods. Verse 6, so my fury and my anger were poured out and kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as it is this day. <clears throat> These people were still refusing to do what God had asked them to do, um, despite everything that they were going through. They were going downhill fast, and as I look at our country you know, we, we don't, you know, we don't have any big major prophets, you know, on TV, I don't think, that are going out and, and telling, hey, what are you guys doing? I don't see um, people going to uh, our government, but we don't need that. We got this right here. This is a history book of every time uh, a prophet is sent out to a nation. It's usually because they're doing something wrong. OK, and if our government would go back to this and say, huh, let's check that out the history. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. Yeah, that didn't work out. So, well. oh, they were desolate. OK, Jonah warned Nineveh. OK, yeah, they uh, <clears throat> they listened. OK, they started doing some good things. Oh, and then uh, 150 years later, Nahum went back to Nineveh and said, hey, you're back in your sin. Yeah, well, we don't care. And they were destroyed. OK, well, you know what? Uh, it's only been about 50 years that the U.S. has started turning their eyes off of God. And look, we started a downward spiral, okay? So to me, it really seems familiar what Jeremiah is going through. Maybe this is what we're going through, okay? Let's look at verse 16. As for the word that you have spoken to us in the same name of the Lord... We will not listen to you. Okay, <laughs> so they recognize it's it's of the Lord, but they're telling Jeremiah, "I'm not. We're not going to listen to anything you say." In fact, you know, uh, during this time, he was tortured for uh, trying to warn them. Okay, and so uh, we uh, we're seeing a lot of things that you know they know the right way of going and they know what to do is right, but they're not doing it. In fact. They're actually telling that, uh, Jeremiah, we know you're right, and we know what the Lord is saying, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna watch you. We're not gonna uh, do what you say. We're just gonna do what we want to do. So God sent a word of destruction to them for their choice, according to verses 26 through 29. Now we're not gonna read all three of those uh, verses, but um, I do want to touch on verse 29. It says, and this shall be a sign to you, says the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for your adversity. Okay. So he's given them a warning. He said, this is what's going to happen. 
and you're going to pay for what what you've done. Okay. So bottom line, when the Lord asks you to do something, it is for the best. Okay. Jeremiah did what what the Lord had asked, but these people didn't listen. And um, Jeremiah had to walk by faith. That's what I call faith. Okay. And I pray that you all continue to have your faith during this rough time. All right. And I would encourage you to also get Linda Lanier's CD, Never Walk Alone, because it is full of faithful songs and it is just full of, of, uh, of what you need in this time. And so for 20 bucks, you can't beat it. Everything's covered for that $20. God bless you and have a great day. Against all hope That help is on the way Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa That's what I call faith Yes, that's faith